Hello and welcome to this Get Out the Vote virtual rally sponsored by the Connectional Sons of Allen of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. This is the day that the Lord has made and we do rejoice and are glad in it. We thank you for taking time out of your day uh, to join forces and join in fellowship and learning with the Connectional Sons of Allen. The, throughout the African Methodist Episcopal Church, uh, there have been a number of initiatives this uh, election season uh, to encourage uh, persons to exercise their right to vote. And the Sons of Allen, under uh, the leadership of our chair of the Commission on Christian Education, uh, Bishop Harry L. C. Wright, and the president, a uh, connectional president of the Sons of Allen, Mr. Monroe Miller, and certainly the leadership of the executive board and others uh, have come together uh, to join forces and to share in these efforts uh, to mobilize uh, the vote. And so we're excited about what will happen on uh, tonight, uh, today, depending on where you are. Um, and we are excited about the voices that we have uh, with us on uh, this day uh, to help us mobilize and to strategize how we might move forward. But before we go any further with uh, our conversation and our discussion uh, for today, I would like to invite our chair, uh, Bishop Harry L. C. Wright, uh, to come and offer uh, some words of welcome and to offer an opening prayer. Bishop Seawright. Amen. Amen. Dr. Garland, thank you so very much for giving me this opportunity to greet this August body. We are so grateful to you as well as the Christian Education Department as our executive director. You are doing a, a phenomenal job and we are so grateful for this opportunity. We are standing at the curse of a great day. We are preparing to elect a president of the United States. What an opportunity to not only elect a president, but we are hoping to elect people who will bring dignity to our democracy, people who will uphold the rights of all people. And so as we come tonight, we are thanking God for all of those who have tuned in to this Zoom webinar to express and hope as well as pray that we all do our duty and go to the polls and vote in this most important election. So as we come, we honor all the people. I want to salute my nephew. Antoine C. Wright, whom we all adore. And you know, he is one of the prides and joys of the C. Wright family. And um, all of, and any other bishops that's on, I know Bishop Regina Jackson is doing a phenomenal job also in leading us throughout the nation and making voices heard and known, uh, making his voice heard and making so many people known throughout this uh, whole ordeal. So yes, we come today excited about the possibilities of what God is gonna do through the African Methodist Episcopal Church as we join with other denominations and people from around the country, making sure that democracy will stand. So with that, I will offer the opening prayer. Dear God, in Jesus' name, we come in your name because we know there's power and authority in your name. And we come today believing you for who you are. We are standing at a very important crossroad in the life of our country. We are standing here believing that you are more than able to bring us out and to bring us through. God, please give everybody the wisdom, the strength, the knowledge to go to the polls and to exercise their God-given right. Help us to remember the sacrifices and all of the many things that people have gone through so that we could have this right. Let us not neglect our duty to try to make our land a better place. And yes, Lord God, we do pray for all of our 
elected officials and all the people who are up for re-election and for election. We just ask God that you do your thing, work your miracle like you normally do as we uh, act as souls going to the poll. Just give us the power to exercise and Lord, give us the victory. You know what we stand in need of and we just claim it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Bishop, uh, for getting us and leading us in the right way uh, by offering uh, a heartfelt and powerful prayer. We thank you. Uh, brothers, sisters, siblings in Christ, uh, I am excited uh, that we have uh, with us on this evening uh, two leading voices. And, and Bishop C. Wright, I don't know if uh, you even knew this, uh, but uh, one voice is your nephew, uh, Antoine C. Wright. And for many of us in the uh, African Methodist Episcopal Church, uh, we are certainly proud of him and we look to him uh, for wisdom and insight. Uh, in fact, uh, he uh, just did an interview and sharing with uh, the Christian Recorder, our uh, official newspaper on last night. And yes. he uh, is joining us again on uh, this evening for um, a repeat performance. So we look forward uh, to his sharing. And then uh, we are excited to also have with us uh, yet another uh, son of South Carolina. We didn't plan to have all of these brothers from South Carolina. It just happened that way. Uh, but we are happy to have also with us uh, Mr. Bakari Sellers, uh, native of Denmark, South Carolina, a uh, Morehouse uh, graduate and a law school graduate from the University of uh, South Carolina. Uh, Mr. Sellers made history in 2006 when at just the, at the age of uh, 22, he defeated a 20 year incumbent state representative to become the youngest member of the South Carolina state legislature and the youngest African-American elected official in the nation. In 2014, he was the Democratic nominee for Lieutenant Governor in the state of South Carolina. Mr. Sellers has worked for the United States Congressman uh, James Clyburn, uh, fellow AME, and former Atlanta Mayor Shirley Franklin. He served on President Barack Obama's South Carolina Steering Committee during the 2018 election and is widely considered a rising star with the Democratic Party and a leading voice for his generation. He's been featured in a number of uh, magazines, uh, he's a featured speaker for a number of conventions and organizations uh, across uh, the nation. He's an author of a New York Times bestseller, My Vanishing Country, and a CNN political uh, commentator. He's a member of the bar in South Carolina uh, and um, part of the strong law firm uh, since 2007. Uh, he is married to Dr. Ellen Rucker Sellers, and they have uh, three children. We are so happy uh, to have both uh, Mr. Sellers and Mr. Seawright, and I am going to uh, yield this time to them, asking them to come in their own way uh, and to share as uh, they are led to do so. I would encourage those who are participating with us uh, to put any comments to each other in the chat. And if you have any questions or concerns or comments, if you would put them in the Q and A section so that uh, our uh, featured speakers will be able uh, to see them and to comment. So, Mr. Sellers and Mr. Seawright, I yield to you, brothers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please allow me to, uh, uh, if you don't mind, unlock my video here. So, okay. 
they can at least see I'm decently handsome. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's make that happen. Let's try to make that happen. Yeah, she can't no worries. This is one of those, uh, I know just enough to be dangerous, so I may not be able to. That's fine if you cannot, no worries. Okay, I'll keep working. Just uh, uh, st stay ready. <laughs> stay ready, I know. So first of all, I am from the big city of Denmark, South Carolina, which I want uh, Bishop C. Wright and, and Antoine to both know is bigger than, than Swansea, um, <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> Um, it, it's where we have three stoplights and a, and a blinking light. And, and Bishop has heard me say this before and Antoine as well. Uh, <laughs> my mom and dad, Gwen and Cleve always tell me the most important words in the English language are the words, thank you, uh, because they're not nearly said enough. And so I know we have some bishops on this call and I know we have some stewards of the church on this call. Um, but I'm just, when I got this invitation, um, to be on this call with the AME Church, I jumped at it. Um, and I want to bring my brother in, Antoine Seawright, because I'm also, and I want everybody to hear this, thankful for his friendship, um, thankful for his guidance. And, um, you know, it, it's it's amazing when you have two young Black men in this realm of politics <laughs> from small towns in South Carolina who are able to find um, ties that bind um, and we are able to um, uh, bring ourselves together to uh, uh, come for an event of this magnitude and such as this. And so, my brother C. Wright, I see your face. I want to say thank you. It looks like you're in a hotel just as I am. We're right. traveling the country. Today, I'm in New York City. Tomorrow, I will be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Thursday, I'll be in Washington, D.C. Friday, Saturday, I will be in Atlanta, Georgia. Sunday, I'll be worshiping in Atlanta, doing souls to the polls. And so, C. Wright, give an introduction. I called C. Wright today and said, look, I, I'm Episcopalian, which <laughs> means I'm Catholic light. I'm Catholic without all the guilt, right? But I need an AME brethren to help me walk through this, uh, this, this terrain today. Uh, and so I called Antoine. And so, Antoine, these people are your family, but introduce yourself and then let's have a quick conversation with the people. Well, good, good afternoon, everybody, and certainly to uh, the 133rd elected and consecrated bishop of our church, uh, my uncle, Bishop C. Wright, and to the 132nd elected and consecrated bishop of our, of our church. I call him Uncle Reginald Jackson. I want to thank them for the friendship, the mentorship, and shoulders I do stand upon, and to all those who are in their strategic and rightful places in our church. You know, I show up to this call as I show up every day in my life at fifth generation AME. And I'm proud to be rooted in Black Methodism. But I'm also reminded in that, that every single day, particularly for the next 14 days, I'm reminding people as I travel the country, tag teaming with uh, my dear friend and my brother from another spiritual mother, Ricard Sellers, uh, is that every major social movement in this country has had some key elements. It's been fueled by young people. I'm 39 to think Bakar is 40. It's been fueled by the Black Press, the Christian Recorder, the oldest Black publication on record. It's been fueled by women, supervisors, um, and uh, women's missionary societies alike. And it's been fueled by Black men, like the Sons of Allen, established in 19... Uh, 84, a year before I was born, in order to strengthen the connection between the Black man or the man and the church. But it's also been fueled by the Black church. And I have no apologies of telling people all across this country, when the Black church lead, our country and our community succeeds. So this moment that we're in, particularly for the next 14 days, requires us to step up and do what God, God has assigned us to do, Amen. not pushing us to do, not hoping we do, but assigned us to do, because all of us have been called to this moment for such a time as this. And so all this conversation we hear around Black men and why it's important for us to show up and not just support a young lady who's a former prosecutor, former United States Senator, former Attorney General, sitting Vice President, former a historical Black College and University graduate or HBCU graduate, happens to be AKA, happens to be a member of the link, not just because of those reasons, it's because she's qualified to do the job. 
She's earned the right to do the job. She's earned her place in history. But in order for her to see, in order for her to see her place in history, it requires us as black men to take care of the family unit and to support a woman who looks like our mothers, who talks like our sisters, who prays like our grandmothers, who understand the challenges of our nieces and our daughters, but also who wants a better country for her children and grandchildren and all of our children and grandchildren, just like our God mothers want it for us. And so this moment is gonna require us to step outside of our comfort zone and do what is necessary. And that's what I hope we do a deep dive in tonight about the importance of the role of the black church and particularly black men and their rightful place in molding and shaping history. You know, Anton, one of the things you talked about and we'll just kind of go back and forth. Um, you remind me of, of Jim Clyburn a little bit as you, with your cadence. Um, and I thought you were going to go to the book of James. My, my grandfather was a, a, a Baptist minister and he would always say, uh, Bishop C. Wright, he would always say, leave the preaching to the pastor. So I, I dare not try to do that today. But the book of James teaches us that faith without works is dead. And right now, in, in terms of the narrative about black men, it requires us to do that much more work. Because what we're seeing is that that narrative, I mean, it, you know, um, uh, in order for a, a black person to be president of the United States, in order for a black woman to be president of the United States, it takes a yeoman effort. I mean, she's having to run the one ten hurdles in high heels and then do a flip at the finish line. Um, and we have to be right there along the way. But it requires us to do that much more because that narrative in our barbershops, you've heard it like I've heard it. Uh, that narrative in our our, our um, small businesses and our uh, youth football teams, everywhere we go on Saturdays and Sundays, our little watering holes is seeping in. And so for the purposes of calls like this, I want you to know that there are tangible action items that we're finally talking about for black men. This is the first time. And, and I want people to really hear me when I say this. But black men, <clears throat> the sons of Allen, deserve a victory lap. And they really do. Win, lose, or draw, you deserve a victory lap because this is the first time in the history of this country where a presidential candidate has put out an agenda specifically targeted to Black men. And that would not happen unless Antoine Seawright was in the place that he is or Bakari Sellers was in the place that he is. But that also doesn't happen unless we're standing on the shoulders of all of you all, all of the men in your church. And yeah, you may not agree with everything. And trust me, I, I'm, I, I know that. You ain't, I'm married. I know, right? You're not going to, this ain't, this is a partnership. You're not going to agree with everything as you go down this path. But there is enough to recognize that at least uh, Kamala Harris is paying attention to us. And I think that for a long period of time, and this has been my frustration, a long period of time, and Antoine, you can tell me if I'm right, we've been subject verb Trump. Instead of telling people why they should vote for us, we've been telling them who the other side is. And so I want to talk about things like making sure you can afford a house. I want to talk about things like making sure that colorectal and prostate exams are free and lowering the age to do that. Or, I mean, those of you all who are in the South, you know the program Call Me Mister, so more Black men are in the classroom, right? You know um, how national mentorship programs work. You know about these things. All of these things matter to us, looking at Black men in particular holistically. But now is a time where we actually got to go the, the steal from, I'm sure that on Friday night, Denmark Ola and Swansea High School are going to be saying the same thing. We got to go all gas, no brakes. And so, yeah, we got to put these, put, put our men in the vans and in the cars. And we got to explain to them on the way to the polling places why this is the right decision. But we got to do everything we can to make sure that they get in because what we can't let happen is another day pass us by or another time pass us by a lot like it was in 2016 when you wake up on November 6th and you wonder what happened. You know, I don't ever want to feel that way again. I, I, you know, as, as a man, I ascribe to the notion that I'm the backbone of my community. And I don't even know if you're supposed to say this in 2024. I ascribe to the notion that I am the head of my household. I ascribe to the notion that my community is as strong as I am. And Antoine knows I'm a crier. I cry enough for everybody on this call, but still, that is a part of my masculinity, and I don't think anything is wrong with that. And I want you all to embrace that masculinity. I want you all to embrace that head of household, the head of the church, the backbone, the head of your family. I want you to embrace all of those things and understand that it's on us to make sure that we don't have that pit in our stomach. 
Now I'm not saying this. I'm not saying if she don't win, it's black men's fault. Now let, let's be let's be hundred percent clear. Mm -hmm. What I am saying is we have an amazing opportunity right now, Antoine, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. We have an amazing opportunity to to make history and take a whole lot of credit for it. And look, let me just say this. For the first time ever in the history of this country, Black people have more staying power, more voting power, and more policy influential power than we've ever had before. 34.4 million eligible Black Americans can participate in this election. That's a 7% increase from the 2020 election. That means that this, the bloodline of those who once picked cotton will now have a large say-so in who the next president of the United States is. Only God can make that happen. Only God can allow that to happen. So that means nearly 16 million eligible, eligible Black Americans in this country look like Antoine, Bakari, Mark Wood, Monroe Miller, Harry C. Wright, Reginald Jackson. Look like most of the men on this call. So we have no excuse when it comes to shaping what the future of our country and our communities look like because we have the power. The power is in our hands. I spoke at St. Mark last Sunday and my message was simple. From his hands to our hands, we have the power. God has strategically given us the power to shape history. And part of shaping history is making certain that people understand what's at stake in this election. So when we go to the barbershop, when we go to our fraternity meetings, when we have prayer, when we do all these things, we have to remind folks about what this election is all about and the contrast. What this election is about is about protecting progress that has been made in this country. We can't show up to church one Sunday and expect all of our spiritual problems to go away. Church is one, is one of the things, one of the many things we have to do on a regular basis, just like voting. We certainly have to make certain that we dispel the misinformation, disinformation, or lies that have come up targeted towards our community for people who want to divide our community. Donald Trump did not give us checks. It was Kamala Harris and Joe Biden because we voted in 2020 that gave us $1,400 stimulus checks, cut black child poverty in half with checks up to $300 per month, per, per household. Some of us who have multiple children in our households got as much as $3,500 a month for six months. But because extremists in the United States Congress said, we don't want y'all to continue cutting black child poverty in half, they stopped the child tax credit. But what she's saying to us in this moment, if you give me the opportunity, not only am I going to continue it, I'm going to expand it add another $1,000 to it, and I'm gonna give you $6,000 so that the basic starting point is a level playing field for those who need it. Most of us were able to worship during, the, during a once in a century global pandemic, we were able to worship, not because Donald Trump was the president, we were able to do that because Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, along with the pushing and thrusting of Jim Clyburn said, we need to make sure that internet access is available to everyone who needed, including our schools. And so we were able to worship online. And as a result, many churches, as pastors tell me all the time when I'm traveling the country, have more offerings online and more viewership online than they've ever had before. We paid off the capital debt for every public HBCU in this country, up to $17 billion. That didn't happen because of Donald Trump. That happened because we voted and Kamala Harris and Joe Biden said we need to do this. $100 billion went to save black and brown businesses during a once in a century global pandemic. We put shots in people's arms. $40 billion went to keep people in their homes and to pay their rental assistance. A once in a generation investment into our nation's infrastructure that's gonna create good paying generational jobs for our community. And if you live in a place like South Carolina, by the end of 2025, every household who needs it and who wants it will have access to the internet. Mm -hmm. We lower the price of prescription drugs in this country, $35 a month for diabetes. Diabetes run rampant in my family, but there's not a person in my family who would pay more than $35 a month uh, for their diabetic medication. 
because we voted in 2020. Come January of 2025, not a senior on this call or around this country, whether they're black, white, or anything in between, will pay more than $2,000 a year for their prescription drugs. We have more black women on our courts than all other presidents combined, including a black woman who looked like my mother on our Supreme Court. More black Americans have health insurance than ever before. Lowest unemployment on record for black Americans. Close the racial wealth gap for the first time in 20 years. More black businesses have started. Let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you. And the reason I'm going to interrupt you is because I got a question from Reverend Samuel Baker. Uh huh. Who says, can, can you expound and inform listeners and Christians that God will not do for us what we cannot do for ourselves, what we can do for ourselves, excuse me. One of well, the yeah. I wanna... If I can, I'll start, and you can finish it, Sellers. I'll, I'll start by quoting an enemy Zion uh, member by the name of Frederick Douglass, who said, I prayed for 20 years and nothing changed. It wasn't until I prayed with my feet until things started to move. You know, one of the things I always talk about, uh, uh, Bishop C. Wright, Reverend C. Wright, Swansea C. Wright, is that um, we always um, read the scripture that, um, and we always talk about the fact that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And for some of us, we think that road will be easy. Um, but the scripture doesn't tell us that no weapon will be formed. It just says that it shall not prosper. And I'm reminded of that often as we go through these obstacles, as we go through our day to day trials and tribulations, that faith doesn't mean that these, you know, these weapons won't form, that they those temptations won't be in front of you. But it means that if you're faithful, it means that they won't prosper. And so what we have to do is stay faithful through this process. What we have to do is, is work extremely hard. And the reason I stopped you is because we were telling the story of everything that we have done, which is a story that's important. But I want people to know about the fact that she's talking about fifty thousand dollars down for a, a down payment on a new home. I want the fact that she's talking about twenty thousand down from a small business forgivable loan or grant, just so people in your churches can buy, you know, a barbershop or get. You know how many clients I got? See, right? That all they want to do is buy a box truck, mm -hmm. twenty thousand dollar box truck, so they can run and make a hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year. You know, these are the things that we're talking about. If you're working at businesses that are publicly traded or corporations that are publicly traded, making it a law that you have to be able to participate um, in their in their stock program. So that as the comp as you work hard, you work 12 hours, you know, you work 12 hour shifts, you work hard and the company give you a pizza party for your 20th anniversary and the stock has gone up 200 percent. But making sure you can participate in that. So as we look to the as we look to the future, there are things that are tangible that are directly affecting the lives of black men. And we wanted all of you all to know that. Look, I know T. Wright has another call. I, I know that. There, uh, I look, so look, let, let me just remind them that the reason why I was giving them the running the receipts, if you will. Oh, you need to do that now. I'm just saying we got to do both. You got to do that. No, no, no. And the reason I did this, because as I travel the country, what I hear from black men, including men in, in the Amy church, is they say. Well, I don't know what my vote got me. I voted for the Dem. I've been voting Democrats all my life, and it hasn't yielded anything. And so part of this is reminding you what we've done and saying if we don't vote this time, most of that goes away. But to what Picard was saying is looking towards what she is going to do. So we've got to reflect and then project. And then we've got to compare that to what the other side is offering to us in Project 2025. And Bakari, I know you can give them a, a real quick summary on what it is, but basically it's a document written in 2024, reads like it was written in 1944, but will have impact on Black Americans in 2084. I mean, that's an understatement. I mean, you're talking about taking away rights, taking away and destroying the Department of Education. You're talking about all the things we, we hold near and dear and true to our hearts being eroded right in front of our eyes. This is one of the most, I'm not going to say it's the most consequential because some of you all have lived where I want to be. You know, I'm not going to say I won't insult your intelligence by saying it's the most consequential. Although for me at 40 years old, I find it to be that much more important. I'll let you make that determination. So my last ask of you all and the audacity of somebody 40 years old from a country town is I would like um, the AME Church and the Sons of Island to decide over the next 24 hours, what day they are going to have. 
over the next 14 days, which is going to be a black men voting day. I, I need you all on one particular day. Me and Antoine will help you with the publicity. We'll, we'll help you with the press releases. But on one day, it can be a Wednesday morning from 10 to 12 or all day or whatever. But we want every male who has been in the AME church, grandparents in the AME church. That definitely covers the South. Because everybody got, listen, I used to go to Bethel, Bethel AME at 8 o'clock in the morning in Denmark, South Carolina, and Rome Baptist Church at 1030. So everybody, I would go with my grandmama in the morning and, and granddaddy in late, late morning. I want to know when the AME Church and the Sons of Allen are having their black male voting day early so that we can make sure we publicize it, so we can show up, so we can push back against the narrative. That's my ask of you all. And on behalf of of my good friend who I saw Saturday and 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 Antoine Hair Antoine Harris's Antoine C. Wright's good friend who he knows extremely well as well, Kamala Harris. He knows more important important people than I do. I just happen to know her. Um, I want to say thank you all for allowing us to have your time, but let's make this about action. I ain't leaving this call if y'all ain't gonna tell me you're gonna do something. This was a waste of my time if you're not gonna do something. But the AME Church is by far the most dedicated not just black church. I don't even want anybody to relegate that, but the most dedicated church to this process of empowering people in the entire world. And I want us to abide by that. And I want us to make that truth in reality again. So thank you and God bless you all. Thank you. Well, thank you, both of you. And uh, Mr. Sellers, I think, uh, I might have you beat. McCormick has two traffic lights and uh, that's my hometown. But thank you both for taking uh, time out of your very, very busy schedules uh, during this very uh, busy season uh, to come and share with us. You have given us uh, some invaluable information. Uh, you have made it plain, as we like to say. And you have offered uh, a challenge, uh, which uh, I accept. And I am going to uh, invite uh, our president, Mr. Monroe Miller, uh, to uh, say a brief word of uh, thank you to all those who have gathered today uh, and, and to officially accept uh, the challenge that has been placed before us uh, on this evening. Mr. Monroe. Thank you, thank you. Uh, can you hear me, uh, Dr. Pierce? Yes sir. yes, sir. Okay, first of all, let me thank all the bishops on the bishops of the church. I wanna thank the uh, you, uh, our commission chair, uh, Bishop C. Wright, and nephew C. Wright, also our executive director, which is you, Dr. Pierce. And I see my vice president, Brother Mark Wood, is on, and all the bishops of the church. This is very important. I'm very happy that the son and, and uh, Bakara Sellers, who's our keynote speaker, I, I, I'm i very excited today that the sons of Adam can put forth this effort to, to make this happen. I was reading in 1 Samuel, uh, the 10th chapter, uh, 20 through 21st verse, where uh, the Lord chose Saul to be king. And it's time for us to choose, to choose. We, we're not God, but we can choose who we want to lead this country and to take, because I don't want to go back. I want to go forward. And and and, and Brother uh, C. Wright and Attorney C. Wright has put, challenged us. So I want to, if it's all right with the director and, and our commission chair, I would like to designate the 30th of this month as our, Sons of Allen Day for men to get out to vote. Amen. That sounds excellent. Praise God. Okay. Attorney Sellers and Antoine, y'all just got my chest so stuck out tonight, <laughs> along with our executive director and Brother Miller. And everybody's from South Carolina on here almost, except Bishop Jackson. <laughs> He's an honorary South Carolinian. Uh, honorary. All right. <laughs> So October 30th is the Sons of Allen uh, Black Men Vote Day. And uh, we will uh, get out of that publicity. We will uh, be in touch 
uh, with uh, Brother C. Wright and Brother Sellers, and uh, we will make that happen. Uh, I can't vote because I already voted, but I can certainly make certain that uh, we get the word out and uh, provide uh, transportation to others who might uh, want to go and vote on that day. So October 30th, let's spread the word. Amen. Let's do as uh, we know how to do, and that is uh, to mobilize. And so I certainly want to add my word of thanks. I want to thank uh, Brother Miller and the Sons of Allen uh, for bringing this initiative uh, to us, uh, for having this vision uh, to help us mobilize uh, the vote. And I want to thank our chair, Bishop Seawright. I want to thank the chair of uh, the Social Action Commission, Bishop Jackson, for being with us, all the members of the Sons of Allen. And I want to thank all the women, all the sisters who are also on this call. Uh, uh, we can't do it without each other. And so uh, we're soliciting your help uh, to uh, use your influence on uh, the men in your lives uh, to encourage them uh, to vote and to stress how important this particular election is. So we're going to keep working and uh, as Brother C. Wright reminds us, we are going to pray with our feet and with our ballot as well. We're going to pray and act for the world we want to live in and the world that we want our children and generations to come uh, to live in. And with that, I am going to invite uh, Bishop Jackson uh, to come and offer uh, any closing remarks and a closing prayer for our time together today. Let me say good evening to everyone. And uh, let me especially uh, thank Brother Bakari Sellers and Brother Antoine Seawright for their participation and leadership, and especially uh, to Dr. Garland Pierce and to the leadership of the Sons of Allen. I want to commend you what you are seeking to do to empower and to motivate, especially black men to exercise what's in their hands. I really believe that in our hands, God has given us the potential to determine the outcome of this election. The key word is turnout. If we turn out, we win. So I'm hoping we will do all that we can to help our sisters and our brothers. The turnout is my hope that we will vote early, that we will vote before election day. Uh, in Georgia in 2020, the thing that turned the tide around was so many blacks voted early on election night when people went to bed, they were behind by a couple hundred thousand votes. But that's because on election day, they counted those who voted on election day. The day after, on Wednesday, they began to count the votes of those who voted early. Most Blacks voted early, and that's what turned the tide in the election. So let's vote, but also let's vote early. Let us pray. Our Father and God, we thank you for the blessings of this day and for all of the opportunities it has presented to us. We thank you for this time tonight, and we've had a chance to come together to hear our brother's testimony, to hear their affirmation, to hear them challenge us to provide leadership, to turn out, to vote, to make a difference and the lives of this nation and its people. Dear Lord, remind us that the descendants of those who laid the bricks in the White House and the U.S. Capitol, those hands can now determine the next person to live in the White House and those persons who will be in leadership in the Congress. Lord, motivate us 
educate us, help us to vote in our best interest, and remind us that we get the kind of leadership that we elect. Now, Lord God, help us to move forward, not backward. Help us to live in the present, not in the past. Help us to make a difference in your name, to be used by you. Bless the sons of Allen in a special way. Let this be a crowning moment in the history of this organization. Now, Lord, forgive us of our sins and give us fresh faith and courage for the living and for the facing of these days. In your name, we ask it all. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Bishop. Thanks again to all of you. Remember, October 30th is the Sons of Allen Get Out the Vote Day. That's the day we're going to vote, October 30th. More information to come. God bless you and have a good rest of your day.